All right, so I'm off early today. First time in, good Lord, quite a few months. Uh, from May 1st until yesterday, which was September 20th, had not had a single day off. So anyway, I'm at home and I'm gonna put this uh, 12,000 BTU, 120 volt mini split in my garage. It's gonna, head unit's gonna go right there. And uh, my wife parks over there, parks her little car over there and dog sleeps right here. So, you know, by the time uh, cold weather sets in, we're gonna have to heat the garage a little bit for the dog and the car. So we'll go up here and measure up exactly where it's gonna sit. All right, so that's where it's gonna sit, right there behind all these bad gum needle bushes. Looks like somebody's watching us. So anyway, we're gonna level it up right there. Uh, it's gonna be off to the side here of my fish pond that we don't yet have fish in. So it's all finished and ready to clean out and fill up. Uh, two pumps are, I don't know if you can see them under there for the waterfalls. And uh, got cameras on them. So we can, those are color night vision cameras. So we can watch the fish at night on the televisions in the house just kind of as a screensaver or whatever i guess but uh anyway that's the living room and i measured in the house where we wanted it uh, i've got the short 15 foot line set so needed this to go pretty close around here where it's at there's our electrical So when we were redoing all the electrical for the pond over there, we dropped a box right there so we can come out of that with a disconnect for the mini split. And uh, you can see we, this is our receptacles for the pumps and these are the spotlights that shine. out here on the pond so let's go in here and uh, start on the head unit and uh, get it in place get the hole drilled get everything lined up and then we'll tighten it all down and we'll level this pad up and put some type of screws in it to hold it still on the pad Mitsubishi unit now it says train on it too. Look who's on top. How about that? Anyway, this thing should be really, really quiet. And uh, shouldn't bother us out here. Just your basic, I think what they would call 16 sear. model to the head unit and uh, line set we have is 15 foot and, uh, of course we'll end up probably shortening that a bit so it's definitely not going to need any charge added so I went outside and I looked at where the electrical comes through right there for my opener. 
and I counted down how far to the ground. And so we hit about the ninth to 10th brick before we hit the ground. So we got plenty of room there to put it. What I really want to be sure to do, and that's the way into the house, into the basement. Um, what I want to be sure to do is be able to blow, you know, a little bit of oscillating, not much, probably won't oscillate much, probably just blow straight across to here mostly. But uh, it's just a small two car garage here and I want to let the heat and cool hit me where I'm standing here. It's my little home version of a tool room and toy room, whatever you want to call it. Pegboard up there hadn't really got moved in good yet. Dog, get out of the way. So let's get it out and start getting it mounted. All right, so a couple things before you mount your head unit is... Uh, Definitely don't want it too close to the ceiling because it needs to be able to rock up, you know, for servicing, take it up and down, whatever you have to do. Um, a good idea is to read the instructions. Comes with plenty of them, read those. But here's what I do as far as leveling this thing goes. Now, in some cases, level is uh, gonna look unlevel, say like, that's not straight or the ceiling or you know the wall beside you or a picture beside you a lot of times you know when you're leveling a thermostat or something and people say that's not level you put your level on it and what you did actually is level and something else is not but anyway what i do on these as you can see is it just swings as i stick something right there in that center hole you can see those are all uh, those are all pre-punched holes in it. And you see that center one right there, kind of a keyhole type thing. I stick a screw or nail, just whatever there, and just make sure you're loose enough to where it can swing. So if it can swing like that, when it stops it's going to be level so um, as long as it's free you know to swing then it's level and then you can go ahead and pick out what you want to use to mount with uh, i'm probably going to use drive pins and i don't recommend those for everybody because you absolutely will not get them back off um, I guess you could grind them off. So anyway, let's get a marker and uh, let's go ahead and get this thing mounted. All right, so let's take a look at these drive pins and see what I'm talking about. Now this is your common, wimpy, everyday uh, anchor kit. Comes with a little plastic insert. Most of them come with bits, but I probably robbed the bit out of it. It's not much of a bit, but um, it'll be this size. And uh, keep one of those in there. So anyway, this is okay for, you know, some stuff, light duty stuff, whatever. Uh, a lot of people use these for disconnects and all kind of stuff and have pretty good success with them. I use them some, but uh, if I really want something to stay, such as a flashing for a package unit or anything like that, I take these drive pins and drill a hole in the, you know, in the in the concrete in the wall or the mortar or whatever, and uh, sometimes I'll I'll use this for the sheet metal. Or whatever I'm mounting to get the uh, to get the right size hole for that because obviously these bits are basically mortar bits so if you try to drill metal with that it's not good just like if you tried to drill mortar with a metal bit but anyway so once you use that and you put that in and hammer this 
head down in and it spreads out it it ain't coming out so you would end up having to grind the head off of it so you need to only use those if you know for sure that you're in the right spot and you ain't going to take it back out so that's what i'm going to use in here on this okay i took my marker and i marked these three holes on the brick those are the three i'm going to use Put a little mark there as to where the lines will go out. And I tell you what, I'm going to drill a pilot hole here and make sure I like that outside. And if for any reason I don't like that outside, that'll be my alternate. But when I measured, this should be on the side of the unit that I want it to to be on. So anyway. There's our marks for our holes. That one didn't come out too good. So I'm gonna get this one over here marked a little better. All right. There we go. So now we can see where to drill the holes for our uh, for our drive pins now obviously first I'm gonna run a pilot bit through there to the outside and make sure I like it where it comes out at and uh, after that's done then we'll go ahead and mount this plate we'll finish out our hole for the line set and we'll get it up there and get this done all right we're about as ready for fish as we're gonna get uh, got the waterfalls working got two separate pumps one pump for that one and one pump for this one and that waterfall over there is a little bit weak but i'm gonna go ahead and live with it they're really just for aerating, so they're going to work good for that. And this right here is uh, working pretty good. I like it. And uh, like I say, I wish it was a little bit cleaner, but we're going to work with it. So all we got to do now is go up here and get some more fish. And we put koi in the back pond. And up here we're going to put what's called pond comets. And uh, we're hoping that they live and grow and do well.
Tell you one thing though, don't ever use them on nothing that you think you might want to get back off. You ain't getting that back out. You have to grind off that whole head. That ain't coming out. One of our installers, my old buddy downtown, Danny Brown, was using these things to put flashing up on the wall, you know, for package units. I said, man, what you got there? You know, it looked like he was going through an awful lot of trouble to, you know, just to anchor the flashing to the wall. He said, he had too many of them settling, popping off the wall, customers complaining, so he's going to come off somewhere else. It wasn't going to come out of that wall. He put four or five of them across the top of that flashing. Anyway, uh, one time... I tried to get a disconnect down that he had put up with him and I'll tell you what, it wasn't that, that, by the time I got it down, it, I had to destroy everything. The box, the disconnect, beat the brick up pretty bad and still didn't really get it, still just ended up whacking the top of it off and just driving it on in. So, I mean, I, it was, like I say, you will destroy whatever you're trying to get back out. So, it's a good permanent way to mount something, heavy duty, but you better be sure you don't want them back out of there. So, that's why I'm only putting those two. I'd normally put, you know, four to six screws on wood. I'll put a couple down here, and maybe a couple in the middle. Put them two right there. They're going to hold that head, I can tell you that now. Okay, well, it wasn't any fun, but I got it up there by myself. Normally, I watch the guys do these, but this is at my house, and the wife wants that dog to have some heat. You don't need no heat. Huh? 12 years old. Black Lab. So anyway, I had to get her to help me hold and feed the comm wire in, but got it done. And the only thing I did here that Ralph probably won't approve of is I just wrapped the wire around. It comes with this washer on the ground screw. Normally what my guys do is they'll crimp a eyelet, you know, a little round eye crimp fitting on there and tighten it down, take the screw out and put the screw through the hole. And I just didn't have one of those with me. So, but you can see the wires clocked around about three quarters of that. It's under that. So it's connected good. It's not going anywhere. And I think Ralph teaches in his classes to do a little better job on this ground here. But I also called Ralph and asked him, I said, and what can I do when I don't have but about six foot of line set because the unit's going right up here. He said, nothing, don't worry about it. It might be a little bit noisy as compared to, you know, I think 10 or 12 foot is probably where the range starts. And you can put up to 25 foot without even affecting the charge, just evacuate it and release it. The beauty of the inverter, I guess. But uh, nonetheless, it got dark. So I just had a little bit of time to spare at the end of the day today. and. Got the inside hung and wired up. So we're gonna set the outside unit, hopefully after work tomorrow and turn this thing on. So that's all I had that I did it with. I tell you, I really like this thing here. Um, it's a good hammer drill. I used those two bits to, uh, to get all the holes right. 
I did did one of those just to spot it and make sure I was exactly where I thought I was. And I did about three of these and then knocked it out between them. And this is a thing that you can use just as a hammer chisel or bit and a hammer drill and a regular drill. So this thing here, I really like it. That's the one that I moved over to just chisel and uh, use that straight point chisel and drove out some stubborn blower motor, fan motor blades and stuff. But hopefully we can finish up tomorrow. Yeah, a little bit of a water issue here. But this house has a pretty nice crawl space, if I remember. Okay, most of these line sets you buy for the mini splits are going to, uh, you know, be supportive of the DIY theory. And as we all know, I am not. And I think you should have a professional to do this job. And here's yet another reason why. Um, if you take a look at this flare, this seat right here, let me see if I can shade it. That seat there is not done with a good machine it's not you know this this you're just asking a lot you see the rough edge you may or you may not be able to see it good on this camera you see the line around the inner edge right there it's just not a good flare and you know what you don't want to have to do is rely on your flare nut being tightened down to shape the bell of the flare there, the flare itself. Um, you just don't want that. So I'm getting some good close-up shots of this. That way you can see the difference between this and what we do with the professional tools. Now, there's a couple of ways to do it, but I'm gonna do what in my opinion is the best, and I'm gonna use this NAVAC flaring tool kit here. Um, it's a cordless kit, and what's pretty handy is it has a little uh, instructions, kind of step-by-step -step thing on the back, but you know, if you've ever used it, you obviously don't need that. But these are nice kits. Comes with a good, uh, you know, reaming tool. Uh, that's an important step. Now, I don't like it. Make no mistake. I do not like the idea of copper shavings, uh, you know, in a refrigerant line. And, and I've just always got it in my mind that you can't get them all out and whatever. But anyway, we're going to cut these flares off. And we're going to keep these forged. These are good flare nuts. Those are the good shorter. They call them forged. Um, those are good flare nuts. We're going to keep those. We're going to reflare the ends. Then I'm going to cut it to length over there. And... Uh, we're gonna install it and start our evacuation process. Okay, so I'm going to use the tubing cutter that came in the kit, the NAVAC tube cutter. Um, and you know, flares for uh, gas lines and plumbing stuff, other, some things might not be as important. Now, and I'll do them a little faster. Now with this one, 
I'm turning and then very slightly tightening in, uh, being a little more patient with the cut than I, uh, than I normally would. And the reason for that is I'm trying to create the least amount of ridge and the cleanest cut that I can. And uh, we'll make a good comparison when we're through of the flare done with the professional kit and the flare that comes on these factory flared line sets. And there's a little bit of a kink in almost every one of them a little bit of a mark right there and I'm of course going to go beyond it completely even with my even with my rollers uh, I'm gonna go back far away with everything and I'm just barely turning this thing each revolution So I'm just being patient with the cut. That's what I'm saying. Okay. So the reason that it is so important to use the reaming tool or ridge reamer, a lot of people call them, is the rough edges in there are going to be part of your flare seat just like these and you can actually see two lines you can see an outer line here and another line inside there from the tool that's not really much of a flare tool in my opinion um, so here's why i don't like these things is Unless you're in a position to where you can really face the tubing down, um, it just seems to me like any of these shavings could possibly be inside of your tube. So that's the thing I don't like about these, but it is a necessary step. So I'm gonna take this tube and hold it facing down and turn it clockwise the way the blade is designed. And I've just always got it in my mind that the tiniest little piece of copper. All right, so let's go ahead and flare the three eighths. Then we will get a close look with the camera at both of them. It's got some oil on it, but this one, the depth gauge is a little bit tight. Or the stop, I call it. But once you tighten your clamp, you can just take your finger in there and push that down easy enough. So let's flare this one and we're gonna go till we hear the knocking noise and let it knock about three times and then we're gonna back it out. Okay. These are really nice, precise tools. 
If you do a lot of mini splits and you don't have one of those, I suggest you buy one. Okay, let's take a close look at those flares and compare them. Hindering us a little bit. Maybe the sun's good. But you can see how smooth the whole seat is and that there's not a line in them. Now the quarter seems to be a little bit deeper of a flare, a little bit wider of a seat. And I'm going to accept that that is by design of the tool. And we have a perfect fit on the flare nuts sliding up on them, as you can see. I'm going to assume that this has a little bit wider of a seat because it's smaller. Um, and that half, see if I can shade it one time too. I don't know which is better, the shade or the sunlight. But now what I'm going to do, I've got the luxury this time that we don't always have of a measured length. I mean, sometimes you just run this thing outside and wait and get up next to your unit. But uh, I've run the lines out the wall and these are going to be extremely short. I'm gonna add a little bit of a loop to them. Not the loop you see where the, you know, that's how you know a homeowner job. You go look behind the unit and this whole loop for the whole line set sits back there and they don't cut either of the, there's your DIY job there. They don't, they don't cut any of the line. And that, you know, my opinion is an oil trap that inhibits the oil flow. And uh, it's just not a good thing to do is loop up a bunch of line set. I don't care what you read anywhere. That's not what I'm going to do. Um, some of the DIY people do that because they don't have any flaring tools or cutters or anything else they just go buy the kit and say do it yourself kit and go put it in and hopefully most of them have somebody come and evacuate it and release the charge but who knows all right so let's uh let's go ahead and cut off what we're going to use here and reflare the other end Okay, so I don't know how well this is gonna work in the sun here, but we'll take a little side-by-side -side viewpoint. See if I can shade it. Uh, the flares, and you can see lines in them. You can see, you know, a little bit of a distortion to these pre-flared line sets especially that quarter inch it's just real obvious how bad it is 
and then you see what a clean flare is on these two done by the professional tool so i'm a fan of the navac tool that's for sure um be careful I don't have the two caps out here for that end so i'm going to go connect those really quick so the one i suggest you buy they have another one that's a little cheaper um and maybe a little quicker easier I, i'm not sure which one really i've only ever used this one but this is the one i suggest you buy that uh that produces some really good results it uh it really produces good results in my opinion. So that's the one I suggest. All right, let's go hook this thing up. All right, and just in case Ralph's watching, I went ahead and crimped the eyelet on the ground wire. He's, he's big on that and I know you probably saw me wrap the wire and squeeze it down on the indoor unit so maybe i need to go change that too but anyway we're gonna hook the high voltage up now we got the low voltage or the control or communicating wire whatever you want to call this it's communicating wire we got it installed right back there is my uh junction box with the 110 in it 115 whatever you want to call that this is 115 volt unit um, it's just for the garage so this is just for a little small two-car garage 12,000 this is really just for the dog she's she's old she's about 12 years old and it's getting cold here at night so we're gonna throw a little heat in the garage for her and uh, then we're gonna tighten up these lines, seal them up, tape them up. I've clamped it up like that. I just wasn't comfortable with like a 24 inch line set. So I looped, I think that's about eight feet is what I did there. Um, and I'm gonna leave this charge alone. I'm just gonna do the triple evacuation process that they suggest. And I'm going to release the charge and let her eat. So let's get our high voltage. All right, I was not familiar with these boxes. And this uh, plug I took out of the bottom threaded. Of course, it was way too deep. and So I had to take a hole saw and drill a hole right here in the side of this box and green is ground red is the white the neutral and the black is the hot i used a whip for a 230 volt deal so anyway let's keep our colors straight and wire this thing up all right so i've got my blue hose here On the single port and uh, I'm going to use this got that open and this closed I'm going to use the S man I started to just take a T and one hose and and put my little micron gauge on it I just decided to grab this and put it on there so let's watch it see how quick it'll come down should be pretty quick. I would think it would be pretty quick. Um, we got what eight foot of line here, so let's watch it come down to 1,200 microns. Then we're going to charge it back with nitrogen, and we're going to pull it down. It's already in microns now. Once it hits 1,200, I'm going to valve it off and hook the nitrogen to it purge that yellow hose and then fill the system with nitrogen and i think you let it sit a couple minutes but it got away from me a little bit it went a little past 1200 and uh 
it was down in the low 11s so I closed it and uh, it is decaying a bit as you can see all right so I'm going to I'm not really worried about the vacuum until the last time seems to be stabilized right there so i'm going to purge this yellow hose just to be sure that i'm putting pure nitrogen in and i think it even called for a specific I think it was 300 pounds, maybe. So I'm gonna put about 300 in it here. And I'm gonna give that a couple minutes and uh, I guess this would be like a thawing process if if there were to be moisture that froze under the vacuum your nitrogen would thaw it and turn it back to back to humidity or back to moisture again where you could have the chance to draw it out so let's go ahead and do the triple process i'm gonna let this sit about three three or four minutes go get me something to drink and uh, we'll come back and evacuate it again all right so what i did i took my red hose off and i used that port to bleed the majority of that nitrogen out and i'm going to let a little bit of it that little eight pounds or so bubble through this vacuum pump. Try not to let anything else back in it. Really, if I had a, a four port manifold with me or just a uh, a five sixteenths, you know, the the larger sized uh, Schrader core tool hooked on here, and you know, using that valve, I could do a little better process. But I'm uh, I'm going to be satisfied with this. So we're headed back down into microns again. This time we'll go down a little below a thousand, throw nitrogen in it again, and then the third time we'll go down to, it's either 500 or 350, but we'll see how we, see how we feel when we're going. All right, I did the same thing again, getting to be a long, boring video. We're in the third step now. I decided to go ahead and go to 350. Uh, no reason not to. 500 is a good vacuum in my opinion, but uh, anyway, I didn't feel like going in the house and looking it up. I, I can't get nowhere on my phone here trying to look at that stuff. I don't see that well. So, the triple evac process is uh, at the risk of quoting Captain Jack Sparrow it's more of a guideline than a rule <laughs> I doubt very many people adhere to it but I did here in my own yard anyway um, but I don't feel like going and looking up the exact parameters of it 
but this last vacuum I'm gonna go ahead and let it run down to 350. It's starting to get slow. And I would say that's certainly not, I mean, there is fresh oil in the bullet there. I would say that's probably due to a crappy rig we got here. We're just pulling through a regular set of hoses. These are, these are not really vacuum rated hoses and it's, you know, that's not, uh, it's not gonna be what the real experts would say is laboratory correct so i'm gonna let this run down to 350 i'm gonna release it and we're gonna turn it on getting slow Getting slow, my patience is wearing thin. I say we're gonna go to 350, but well, there's 355 and 354. She's trying. <laughs> Pretty sure these hoses are not really uh, best thing to use under that type of vacuum. All right, so we got all the electrical back together. I'm gonna take some, uh, I'm not gonna fill that with mortar. Um, sometimes we use that hydraulic cement or we use mortar patch, you know. I think I'm just gonna use that butyl rubber stuff and stuff that full and leave it a little more serviceable, you know. Uh, if you ever had to do anything or change it out or replace it or whatever you had to do. I don't, I'm just, something's just telling me not to do that so I'm not gonna do it. Um, there's like I say where we had to come into the side of that box with a hole saw and our communicating cable here strap to this i'm gonna do something to weigh that down a little bit and just let that stay right there um, you know all our electrical and our communicating stuff is finished so i'm gonna put that cover on as soon as i release this um, that final vacuum we did get down just a hair below 350 and i closed it off stuck this cap on as quick as I could so I stuck that on as quick as I could after that and we're going to go get the allen wrenches proper for that and release this thing and turn it on okay covers I should say because you have this one that goes inside and uh, kind of holds your electrical wires in place and then this one that goes here so we're getting there all right so all we need now are the screws to screw it down to the pad and we're good to go so uh we got the cover on it. And everything's looking good enough for me. So let's go crank her up. All right, she's powered up. And the louvers came down and went back up. And uh, now I got to figure out what I did with the remote. <laughs> started this thing probably almost a, oh, I don't know, three or four weeks ago, almost a month ago. So, as soon as I find the remote, we'll turn her on. All right, she's working good. 
took me a minute to to decide you know about the vein if I wanted it constantly moving and oscillating or whatever um, just figured out that you know dog sleeps out here in the middle of the floor and it looked like that'd be about the best I could stand over there and kind of feel it Took me a minute to figure out the remote, but when all else fails, read the instructions, and I did that. So, got all that figured out. Looks like it's gonna be okay, so I'm gonna come back in here in an hour or two and see if I can feel a big difference. All right, that's it. She's up and running. Thanks for watching.